What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. This one has been highly requested in the past and I'm finally putting this together in honor of my 2021 boss guide refreshes. So I figured I'd start out with this one and this information actually will be included later on in my new Chambers of Zarek guide. However, I did wanna put this out a little bit earlier because it will help a lot of people that might be struggling and understanding what they might need to buy next to make their way through the Chambers of Zarek in the most efficient and high damage output way possible. I have a couple of reasons for putting this one out before the actual Chambers of Zarek guide refresher. And the first one is because it would add a lot of time to the Chambers of Zarek guide as a whole. And I wanted to try to keep that guide as short as possible because it's already gonna be long. The second reason is because maybe there's a lot of people that actually know how to do Chambers of Zarek. They're just not sure what order to buy their gear in. So instead of sifting through a very long Chambers of Zarek guide, you can just come to this video, check out what they need, and then move on. One more thing I do want to say is all of the slides you are seeing in this video will be available in my Discord channel in the Chambers of Zarek information channel. You can download them and save them and keep them for your reference at any time you would like. All right, so I've already talked too much. Let's go ahead and get into this one. So the first thing we are going to start off for the Chambers of Zarek is must have items. These are the items that you must have to complete a raid successfully. Obviously, you can do it without these items, but it is really beneficial to have some of these. So your first one is going to be the Salve Amulet EI. This is used for the Mystics. They are considered undead since they are skeletons, and it will boost your range damage and accuracy by 20%, clearing the room faster, getting you more points per hour, which means more drops in the long run. Your next one is going to be the Bandos God Sword or the Dragon Warhammer. You want to have one of these. Don't come into a raid without one because one, the team's probably going to roast you if you don't have one, and two, you'll be slowing your team down if you don't. If you can't afford the Dragon Warhammer, make sure you save for a BGS. Third thing, Imbued God Capes. These are not hard to get. You can go out in the wilderness and get one. It doesn't cost anything but the runes to cast the spells to follow the little mini quest and get these, so make sure you take the time to get yourself an imbued god cape. Next up is the fire cape or the infernal cape. Obviously the infernal cape, it is an achievement in the game to get one of those, but a fire cape at a bare minimum. If you don't have one of those, go get it ASAP. Don't be going into the chambers of Zarek with a skill cape. Next up is gonna be the Ava's assembler or accumulator. Obviously the assembler does take dragon slayer too, so it could be a little bit difficult depending on the person and what quests that they have done. So at a bare minimum, you do want to have an Ava's Accumulator. And last but not least, you want to have a Rune Pouch. Most importantly, for taking Water Spells in for the Flame Walls, not everyone needs to have the Water Spells for the raid, but it is good practice to get into to have everybody on your team or at least one person with Water Spells. Next, I just want to talk quickly about Last Resort Armor, and this is going to be the Void Knight and Elite Void Knight Armor. Now, these are actually your lowest tier options for the chambers of Zarek. Anything less than this, like let's say rune armor, absolutely not. Do not bring that to the chambers of Zarek. So the lowest I would suggest you go is void knight and elite void knight equipment. Now the elite void, you do need to have the diaries done to get the elite void, but really that only takes time and a little bit of dedication to get. So if you don't have the elite void, I would suggest just taking the time to go get it if this is all you can afford to use and get started with. Obviously, regular void will work, but you will be suffering a DPS decrease if you do that. So go get yourself some elite void. Moving into our next section, we are going to check out our gear progressions. We're going to go ahead and start off with melee. I'm going to try not to talk too much through these, but there are some things that I do want to point out. It is pretty self-explanatory. Left to right is going to be best to worst, respectively. The first thing I do want to talk about is the Avernic Defender in your offhand slot. The Avernic Defender is a nice purchase, but... You cannot sell it back once you have made it. That is it. It is consumed and it always will be in a Vernic Defender. So if you're not ready to spend that kind of cash on that, just stick with the Dragon Defender. As for the weapon, Scythe of Vitor, obviously best in slot for melee throughout the Chambers of Zarek. Following this is going to be the Dragon Hunter Lance. And you might be wondering why this is ahead of the Blade of Saldor and the Grazi Rapier. Well, the Dragon Hunter Lance actually has pretty decent stats for Stab, Slash, and Crush 
and you can use it on the Great Ohm because the Great Ohm is considered a dragon, so you will be getting that damage and accuracy boost that the Dragon Hunter Lance provides. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, as you can see on the screen. As for the ammunition, we'll check that out in the range progression part. And the special attack, obviously Dragon Warhammer is going to be your best, but if you can't afford it, a Bandos Godsword will do just fine. Next up is going to be our ranged gear progression. Once again, best on the left, worst on the right. As for this one, it's really, this one is really self-explanatory. You really can't get more obvious than this. As for the weapon, Twisted Bow is going to be your best in slot item, followed by the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. Once again, because it does have decent range, it can use the Dragon Ruby Bolts Enchanted, and it does work on the Great Ohm. Once again, because the Great Ohm is a dragon, your third weapon here is going to be the Toxic Blowpipe. DPS is very good, followed by the Armadale Crossbow. And once again, ending it off with the Dragon Crossbow. Now, I didn't put the Rune Crossbow on here because the Dragon Crossbow is pretty affordable for almost any account. But really, if all you can use is a Rune Crossbow, I guess you are stuck with that. As for everything else, same thing. It's pretty obvious. As for the ammunition, Dragon Arrows in the Twisted Bow. Rune darts in the blowpipe, if you can afford it. You can downgrade to adamant, but I really wouldn't suggest it just for time and damage sake. And as for the bolts, ruby, dragon bolts enchanted, and adamant, ruby bolts enchanted, depending on what weapon you're using, or if you can afford one or the other. Last but not least is going to be our magic gear progression. And once again, left to right, best to worst, respectively. Ancestral is your best in slot. The hat actually does not add a damage at 99 magic, so you actually don't need to worry about that. As for everything else in the shield slot, the Arcane Spirit Shield is going to be your best, followed by the Mage's Book, but those aren't really super necessary. You can just go with the Book of Darkness or Malediction Ward if you do have one. As for the Tome of Fire, in parentheses, this is going to be used if you are using the best in slot Harmonized Nightmare Staff. Now that Harmonized Nightmare Staff does put it on par with attack speed with the Trident styled weapons, and you will want to be using Fire Surge, which is why the Tome of Fire is there, because it does increase the damage to fire spells. As for everything else, once again, self-explanatory. In the boot slot, your worn boots should actually be unequipped when you are maging. In the chambers of Zarek, it will give you a little bit more magic accuracy if you take those boots off. As for the ring, see the melee progression, which we talked about earlier. Most likely, you're going to be camping a Berserker's ring throughout the whole raid. And as for the range, see the range progression once again. And last but not least, the spell, once again, Fire Surge. Next up, I have put together some example gear setups, and they will feature best in slot, mid tier, and low tier. I will actually just leave these up on the screen for you guys to take a look at and take in. There's really not much to be said about them aside from what I'm going to say now, and this will apply to all of the example setups. As for the little green circle you can see on the bottom, you will replace that with a needed boss specific item. The boss specific items are specific to a certain boss in the chambers of Zarek. For example, the Sanfu Serum is needed against the Lizardman Shamans and Vespula because they do poison you. You want to keep that off. The Salve Amulet EI, once again, for the Skeletal Mystics. The Rapier or the Lance is going to be for poking the crystals when you're at Vasa. And you will definitely want to have a stab weapon for that because nothing else really works as well as a stab weapon. And last but not least, the Crystal Pickaxe is going to be for the Guardians. And obviously that will downgrade as we go through setups. Everything else, please just take a look and enjoy. I will let these roll out and I will see you in just a minute.
All right, so I hope that those gear setup examples have helped you out. And if you didn't know which direction you were going, I hope you do now. Now for our last section of this video, and in my opinion, the actual most important. This is gonna be our gear purchase order and rebuild advice. So first thing you will see is the Chambers of Zarek core items. These are gonna be the items that you always want to have and you want to get them as soon as possible. Now for this, you'll have the Necklace of Anguish, then you will buy the Rigor Prayer, then you will buy a Dragon Hunter Lance, followed by a Tormented Bracelet, followed by an Amulet of Torture. These are the five items that you will always, always, always want when you are at the Chambers of Zarek. Now, for our Chambers of Zarek Best in Slot purchase order, I have listed the items out here from left to right. Once you get all the way to the end of the first row on the right, you will start over again at the left side of the second row and move all the way to the end. So your purchase order is going to be the Necklace of Anguish, the Rigor Prayer, the Dragon Hunter Lance, Tormented Bracelet, the Dragon Warhammer. There's a little one here. The Dragon Warhammer actually is not needed if you're raiding with a group that consistently uses Dragon Warhammers. If you have a group that has two or three or more Dragon Warhammers in it, you're actually fine using the Bandos God Sword. So you can actually skip this one and move right onto your next item, which is the Dragon Hunter Crossbow, followed by the Amulet of Torture. A Dragon Pickaxe will follow this, but if you can make a Crystal Pickaxe, it would be nice to do, so you can go ahead and do that. After that, you'll purchase the Augury Prayer, followed by a Sanguinesti Staff, and then we come to the Ancestral Hat, which we talked about earlier. This one, number two, if you have 99 Mage, you'll actually want to skip the Ancestral Hat because it doesn't it doesn't add additional max hit. So you will move to the next purchase, which is the Ferocious Gloves. Then you will get an Armadil Helmet, followed by the Ancestral Robe Top, the Ancestral Robe Legs, the Knot Face Guard, Primordial Boots, Armadil Chest Plate, Armadil Chain Skirt, Bagasian Boots, the Bandos Tacits, and then you will come to the Avernic Defender. This should only be bought after you have purchased a Twisted Bow and are rebuilding from that. When you're dumping for a Twisted Bow, like I said earlier, the hilt cannot be sold and you will not get that money back. It will be an Avernic Defender forever. The last one that really actually matters is going to be the Bandos Chestplate. And this is actually last because the Fighter Torso gives you the same amount of strength bonus as the Bandos Chestplate. So honestly, it's kind of useless except for the defense bonuses until you get to that point. Your third to last, or rather second to last item is gonna be the Grazi Rapier because once again, you have the Dragon Hunter Lance which will do well in all three melee attack styles. And your last purchase is going to be the Arcane Spirit Shield. Our last square has a big four in it and this represents items that should already be purchased and never sold. This does include the Toxic Blowpipe, the Occult Necklace, and the Berserker's Ring imbued. Now, the reason I have put this purchase order in here is for a Twisted Bow rebuild. Now, if you are going to dump your bank for a Twisted Bow, this is going to be the order that you want to build up your items all the way up to that Twisted Bow. And the reason that you're doing that is because this will increase your raid efficiency and damage in the best way possible so you can get to that Twisted Bow faster. More points per hour means more raids per hour means more drops per hour. So... If you do it this way, once you get your Twisted Bow, you will then return to the very beginning of this and you will start rebuilding all over again. The thing I want to end on here is your core items you do not want to sell for a Twisted Bow. So you want to save up the money for a Twisted Bow while keeping those four core items. Obviously, the Rigor Prayer, you can't get the money back for that. Once you read the Prayer Skull, it is unlocked and never usable again. So once again... Keep your core items even when you are rebuilding with a Twisted Bow because you'll just make your money that much faster. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for this one. I hope that those of you out there that have requested this video have enjoyed it, and I hope that it has given you some insight into how you should purchase your Chambers of Zarek items and what you should be working towards. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really do help the video's popularity. If you haven't done so yet, tap that subscribe button on your way out. And if you want to support the channel in a greater way, you can join it to become a channel member. You'll get exclusive access to community member only posts as well as in-game events with me. Once again, everybody, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.